morning everybody taking a quick video to show you guys frost seeding at least how we do it also the video is used uh, for me to get a break <laughs> um, it is 743 March 7th um, Sunday morning trying to get some frost seeding in before church you can see well, maybe you can't a nice layer of frost on everything looking at the coming days this is going to be one of the last frost days for a while um, despite only being March 7th we've got 60s coming up and some nights lows are only in the mid 40s some nights 50s so the ground is going to soften we'll undoubtedly get more frost days and I'll go into our seeding mix uh, strategy for that ex expectation but you can see here um, we are around the sheep in with the sheep and going to be broadcasting seed out in front of the sheep <clears throat> so this is for those who have just started following us a reclaimed row crop field so you can see row crops behind that tree line our fence border property line uh row crops over there we're, we're surrounded it has been quite a challenge with how poor this ground is <laughs> and then how financially poor we are we're starting out we don't have some massive seed drill um, we should have taken everybody's advice despite being new to the area and tried to get a relationship with a big grain farmer to drill our fields for us you know with their 15 20 foot drills or more but anyway we use the sheep we broadcast in the spring normally ahead of them to establish most of this pasture in the spring no matter which uh type of paddock they're in this one's high dry ground or there's also low wet ground and then there's degrees in between um, no matter what the sheeps um, all the sheep hooves have the ability to push seed into the ground and despite our best efforts um, to wait to get cattle uh, the root system after i think it was even two years just wasn't fully established enough in such a chemically laden ground i'm blaming um to be able to support the weight of cattle on our heavy wet clay soils and we still have some bare spots so what we do is we try to frost seed ahead of the sheep we have quite a lot of good grass but we also have you can see there are some uh bits of lime grass we've got some wire grass let's see camera finger right there um, <clears throat> and our fruit trees are somewhat struggling if i could do it again i would um, run at least a year and a half of uh, cover crops uh, very intensely drilled and then i would put in our perennial blends but anyway to get to the seeding so we have a nice carryall made by Doug Watson and uh, we throw a pallet on it and it holds a whole bunch of different seed. Being beekeepers, we absolutely love the Crimson Clover. That's this bag here that says Nitro Coat. We got another bag there. Pretty cheap. We get it from Walter Seed. It's like 80 bucks after delivery um, and, and it's a great seed. It will reseed itself to an extent. Um, maybe 50% of the stand if you let it go to mature hard seed. Nice thing about it, it's still edible by the animals. They still love to eat it after it's mature. We have a mixture of what little perennial blends uh, we have. There's chicory, alfalfa, crimson clover, white clover um, of different varieties, alcyke. Uh, there's brome and all kinds of stuff in there. And then we have our other bag that we just bought from Track Supply, the last one remaining. Um, there's all kinds of stuff in there, but annual ryegrass, a endophyte free fescue, orchard grass, and perennial rye, if I remember off the top of my head. We've got oats and wheat, and this one is cereal rye. And I got a tiny bit of hairy vetch. We just blend this all together 
The cereal grains are very, very, very cold tolerant. Um, I'm not so sure about shade tolerance, but being cold tolerant, they're going to germinate and start growing. Hopefully, um, before these things get their leaves, if I'm putting it in the shade. This uh, bucket of the fancier expensive seed and that perennial seed with mixed with annual regress, um, I don't know that they're going to do very well if we if they germinate and then we have a frost um, let's say like early or mid April so uh, we are diluting them through the very cheap cereal grains I broadcast out ahead of the sheep um, on bare ground I can go heavier using this shoulder mounted bucket seeder I'm borrowing from my work farm but uh, it's really nice with my left hand, I can just open and close it, uh, depending on how thick the actual pasture is where I'm walking. Um, I think that's everything. I got to get back to it. But if anybody has any questions, please, please, that is why we have this channel. Ask away. Take care.